Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. This is the third video dedicated to this absolutely beautiful language, Portuguese, which intrigues me more and more. So we've listened to uh, Portugal Portuguese, we've listened to the Paulista accent, which is from the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil. But today I want to dedicate an entire video to the so-called Carioca accent, which the way I understand it, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is the accent spoken in Rio de Janeiro. So, as an Italian native speaker, I have no training in Portuguese. I want to see how easy or difficult it is for me to understand what they're saying and try and imitate it. Let's see if I can speak like a real carioca. Can you say that? We're going to try three different videos. The first one is very basic. Let's go. The Carioca dialect. Dialect Carioca. Numbers. Dialect Carioca, I think. Dois, três, quatro. So as I had already noticed in my previous video when I had a little glimpse of this Carioca accent, I have to say that the S at the end is very much of a SH. At first I thought it was a retracted S, like a SH, but I, I was actually wrong. It's a full-on SH, which makes it so interesting. So he said DOIS, TRES, TRES, SET, OIT, NOV, DEZ. Greetings and phrases. Bom dia. Boa tarde. Boa... So the D is a full on J in this accent. Boa tarde. So the second one was Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa noite. Como você tá? Oh. This is also so interesting. Boa noite. So um, as I was saying in my previous video, I think as an Italian, and of course I will make a dedicated video to northern accent in Brazil as well, which are probably closer to how I pronounce the T's, the D's, uh, because if I didn't know anything, I would just read it Bom dia. Boa tarde, boa noite. That's how I would read it, without no training, just coming from an Italian perspective. But one thing that happens in the Carioca accent, for what I can see, is that the D becomes like a J, the T becomes like a CH, and the E at the end of word, probably when it's not in a stressed diphthong or anything, is basically pronounced like, a, like, a, like I would read E. This is what I'm noticing. And by the way, I friggin' love it. I love this accent. Let's continue. Como que tu tá? Tô bem. Você é da onde? Sou do Rio. Quantos anos você... Ok, você é da onde? I didn't understand that. I understand você to be like you, kind of you plural, but it's probably a formality. We actually do that in Italian too. Many people don't know this, but... So in Italian, when there is informal and formal, we have the tu form, so I would say, uh, tu, tu di dove sei. Then there is formal, which is created with lei, which literally means she. Even if I'm talking to you, that's how you make formal in Italian. Lei di dove? But some people in some areas still use an older version, like in, in the Campania region, Naples, an older version which was more commonly used in medieval Italian where they do voi. Voi di dove siete? So I understand it. I understand the usage. Kind of similar to French, if you will. How many years do you have? I have 18. Thank you. And then, of course, he asked, how old are you? And then he said, I'm 18. I think I recognize that because the numbers are kind of similar. And then I do know that obrigado means thank you. It's interesting because in Italian, the word obbligato exists, but it just means obliged, like forced or when something is mandatory, which probably is, is, is the same root. Probably like you are in, you're obliged to, to say thank you. It's very, very, very nice way to do it. De nada ou nada. Desculpa. Oh, foi mal. Bem-vindo. Sim. Não. Tá chovendo muito hoje. I am so interested with this characteristic that I think is a common trait between all Portuguese accents, the, the, the extreme nasalization, particularly of final M's, which is actually a conservative aspect that comes from the original pronunciation of classical Latin from 100 BC uh, to 200 AD, so what we consider to be the, the, the exactly classical Latin. Because the M at the end of words in classical Latin, ancient Roman authors tell us that it was basically almost as if it wasn't there, it was fully nasalized. As an Italian in ecclesiastical Latin with more of a medieval or modern pronunciation, I would say imperium, but at the times of Julius Caesar, they would have said imperium with a um, which I can still see in Portuguese. Tá indo pra onde? Tô indo pra escola. Você fala português? Foi mal, não falo português. Meu nome é Guilherme. Que horas são? São seis horas. Vocabulary. Caô. Leque. Cara. Brota. Marcum 10. 
Bagulho já é meter o pé. I did not understand one word there. No idea. I could not translate that vocabulary to save my life, but that's not going to stop me. I do want to change video though. Let's see if we can see some people actually speaking it fluently. Let's go. Hit me. Rio de Janeiro. Esse sotaque que faz parte da paisagem já foi considerado o sotaque oficial do Brasil em dois congressos da língua portuguesa. E não é para menos. O Rio de Janeiro já foi sede do Império Português. Já foi a nossa capital. I love the musicality of this accent and I am understanding a little bit. I think he was saying that it was at one point it was like the capital of the country of the Imperial Portuguese Empire or something like that. Did he say that? a nossa capital federal e desde sempre segue lançando moda com gírias e expressões que transformam o S em muito X pelo mundo afora. Esqueci o isqueiro na esquina da escola. Eu sou Rebeca Leão, eu sou atriz e eu sou do Rio de Janeiro. Ao mesmo tempo. So one other thing that I'm noticing is that I had already noticed in the previous video where we did a little bit of paulista accent in comparison with the carioca that the it seems like that they don't really trill or roll their R's in this variety of Brazilian Portuguese uh, in the sense that rather than doing an R like I would do uh, they sound more like a R sound but at the beginning of a word now it just sounded like an aspirated H to me I could be completely off here but I I'm just saying as someone who's not trained she didn't say Rio de Janeiro but she didn't say Rio either it sounded like Rio de Janeiro Rio de Janeiro I think Am I wrong? Que as palavras diminuem, tipo, o meu irmão vira meu irmão, tem uma coisa muito característica que é de, de aumentar, né? Fiquei boladão. Pô, boladão, maneirão, porra, maneiro, irado. Tem que dar uma esticada, né? Bo Are they like prolonging the eyes? That was you're trying to say? Boladão. Boladão aconteceu um negócio que não foi legal. Tu fi boladão. I love it. I probably butchered it. Ficou boladão. E aí? Que aí dá aquela esticadinha que você. E aí? E aí? E aí? E aí? E aí? Ah, mas é aí ou é aí? <risos> é aí. Sinistra quando algo é muito. Sinistra. <risos> I think she said sinistra. Yeah, it seems like they do uh, lengthen their vowels, but I mean, you do have so much space in Brazil, it's so big anyway, so who cares? Just lengthen all the vowels you want. Impressionante, né? Pô, sinistro. Ou então, assim, muito maneiro. Impressionante. Is that like an, an expression? Is that a way to say annoyed? Maneiro é quando a coisa é muito legal. Pô, maneiro, irado. Gastar uma onda. Gastar uma onda? Gastar uma onda. Tem a ver com a praia? Não, não tem não? a ver com tá arrasando. Meteu essa é, pô... Azanda. I love this. It's, it has a, such a typical intonation to it that I'm starting to realize the more, the deeper I go into this series about Portuguese as a language and all of its varieties around the world, uh, the one thing that I'm noticing is that, you know, when you've got those videos that tell you, oh, let's compare Portugal Portuguese with Brazilian Portuguese. And I'm thinking there is like, there are like already, how many different accents have you got in Brazilian Portuguese? So, I mean, you've got to say which one because otherwise it just doesn't make sense. Imagine if you compare from, from so far, what I gathered, imagine if you compare like Lisbon Portuguese with Sao Paulo Portuguese, and then you hear something like this, like this, they sound nothing like people in Sao Paulo. And I imagine I'll make a video soon that the people in the North of Brazil will sound completely different once again. I gosto this for me, caô, é. Mentira. Qual é rapá? Qual é rapá, rapá, né? Tem o um rapá também. Qual é rapá? Qual é, é rapá? É... Fala leque. Aí, leque. Aí, aí... Is this maybe closest to Portugal, Portuguese? Maybe? On some aspects I'm trying to, to figure out because the, the sh at the end kind of sounds a little closer to how they pronounce it, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's still very different. Don't get me wrong. I'm, just, I'm not saying that they are the same. I'm saying maybe. Leque pode ser usado em muitas formas, mas é moleque, cara, leque. Pô, maluco. Ah, é maluco. É maluco. Maluco não quer dizer nada assim com a pessoa mais doidinha. Nada pejorativo. Não, maluco é bom. <risos> ok, so I'm of course not understanding anything. Uh, so it's, it's as always very different, but I'm going, I'm going to become fluent in Portuguese. Should I pick a carioca accent or do you think I should pick a different accent? You let me know, but this one sounds amazing. I freaking love it. Now é maravilhoso aqui esse ambiente só para vocês para um novo episódio de Easy Brazilian Portuguese. Estamos no Rio de Janeiro e eu gostaria de. Of course, I have no idea where she's from, so let's focus just on the people that are interviewed rather than the interviewer, because I don't know where she's from. Saber o que faz o carioca ser carioca. Vamos falar do sotaque dele, 
e também de outras peculiaridades. Vamos lá! E olha, eu quero que meus, que nossos alunos saibam o sotaque carioca. Qual a diferença aqui? O sotaque carioca puxa o S, né? O biscoito. Biscoito. O biscoito. So he's saying that one of the differences is the S. Yeah, we got that one. Eu não tenho agora outros exemplos, mas é muito puxado muito pro S. Ah, eu posso falar uma frase e você falar em carioquense para mim? Ok. Uh, <risos> nossa, qual frase eu vou escolher? Uh, São Paulo não é tão legal quanto o Rio. São Paulo não é tão legal quanto o Rio. Não é uma frase que se encaixa. Não, 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 não funcionou. Eu gosto muito de biscoito. Gosto muito de biscoito. Puxando bastante o S. Yeah, I mean, that's not difficult for me as an Italian to pick up, particularly because I'm southern and there are some areas in the south, specifically in Sicily, uh, but not just Sicily, also like in the Campania region, it's just we do it differently. But for example, the change of the S into a SH happens in Italian. In Neapolitan, they do it, but they don't do it when there is like a T. So like in Neapolitan, they will say la mosque, a scuola, but they won't say studiare. It sounds like they do. And there are some areas in Sicily, more like the rural areas, where they do that too. So it actually, it's not where I'm from, so I wouldn't do it naturally, but I've heard it. O que mais uh, você sabe sobre as diferenças do carioca na cultura? Tem uma coisa muito diferente aqui? Ah, o carioca é muito desenrolado, né, cara? Ele gosta de praia. I think he said that uh, a, a carioca person likes the beach. Finally, I'm understanding something in Portuguese. Making progress. Marzão aí, o carioca é muito mais de... Mais desenrolado mesmo que o, que, o, que, o, que o paulista, né? O paulista, geralmente, outras coisas, eles são muito... São muito mais acanhados, né? E não o mineirinho. Mineirinho não é o que come pelas beiradas. O carioca é mais, é mais solto. O paulista, ele sempre só vai para a empresa, né, de dia e noite. Isso, é. Muito trabalhador. I believe he's saying that, like, of course, these are a little bit of stereotypes, but it's fine, it's fun. And I believe he's saying that compared to a paulista, paulista more like into work and business. So from this point of view, if he is right, it sounds a bit like the difference between a southern Italian like me, absolutely. Love the beach, take your time, don't do things in a rush, very relaxed compared to someone from Milan. Instead, they were very much into like work, 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 business and that kind of stuff. Like a little bit like that. So still, I don't understand a lot. It's, it's difficult for me, but I'm starting, compared to the first time that I listened to specifically Brazilian Portuguese, I want to say that I'm starting to pick up some of the differences uh, that make it harder for me to understand when it's spoken rather than when it's written. And I'm starting to pick them up. We definitely need to continue this journey through all the different varieties of accents in, in Brazil and in Portugal. Let me know with what next city I should try, or not next region, maybe your region. Absolutely let me know in the comments, and as always, thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.